Greetings everyone. Today on the bench I want to talk about amplifier, power up, power down, transients. In other words, when you turn your amplifier on or turn it off, you'll get clicks or pops or thumps, whatever you want to call it. So what spurred this was sometimes I get that question asked about clicks and pops. And uh, I recently had a guy ask me, hey, I bought this TPA3116 Class D board from, I don't know, AliExpress or something like that, $3. <laughs> There's a clue. And he says it makes a loud click or pop when he turns the thing on. What can I do about it? Well, probably not much in that case. You're not going to get th much for three dollars. It, it's probably not a authentic part on that board, and it's likely ill-designed, and they cut it down to the bare minimum. But in other cases, there might be something you can do about it. So I have this little breadboarded TDA seventy-two sixty-seven chip amp, and if I hook up power to it if you listen carefully and hear it makes a click when I power it up and kind of a thump when I power it down it's not really loud there's not much you can do about it because it's just the way the circuits designed but with a capacitor coupled output, you're going to get a little bit of transient when things powered up and powered down. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the causes of this here. First of all, internal to the amplifier. Like I mentioned, it just could be the design of the circuit. A lot of lower cost single supply type amplifiers will use capacitor coupled outputs, sometimes bootstrap circuits, and they're known to cause more of a pop or thump, a power up and power down. Another problem could be failing parts. You might want to check electrolytic capacitors such as the supply bypass. Those tend to soften the power up and power down and make the transients less noticeable. And if they're failing, you get a faster rate of change of the voltage as the circuit is powered up or down, and, and of course a transient from the output. There are also electrolytics that control the biasing. Most Class D type amplifiers are bridged output, but they'll still utilize bypass capacitors, and they might have supply rejection type capacitors that connect to one of the pins. If the circuit designer was cheap and ignored that, it you know, might have more transients at power up or down. Again, it depends on the circuit and the chip involved. So now we'll look at transients external to the amplifier. First off is received from the signal source. Of course, your amplifier is going to be connected to some type of signal source. It could be a preamp. It could be some other music source turntable, tape deck, digital music player. If you power those up or down with the amplifier, those might be sending a transient into the input of the amplifier, which could be causing the problem. In that case, you'd want to power those up before turning on the power amp or powering them down after you turn off the power amp. Yeah, it's an extra step or two, but if that's where this problem is coming from, not much you can do about it. To test that, just disconnect the signal source and then try powering up and down the amplifier and see if you still have the transient. Finally, there's external electrical noise. And by that I mean noise that's received from somewhere else. That could be the transformer of another electrical appliance. For example, if you have another device that you're turning on or powering down with the amplifier, Especially at power down, you might get a click. Now the transformer operated device, or even the amplifier itself, 
should have some sort of a suppression device and it could be as simple as a across the line capacitor so when a switch is open it helps absorb the noise created from the spark and these capacitors are known to fail so you might want to check those a lot of devices don't include one and you might want to put one in you want to use an appropriate rated safety capacitor and those range from 10 nanofarads up to 1 microfarad. I'd say 100 nanofarad is pretty common. And it might be good enough to suppress the clicks and the pop when you turn the device on and off. Let's see if we can hear the transients of the JAT501. And you'll hear some relay clicks from my power supply. And hear that. Not much I can do about that. But... And there is a turn on click. Nothing at power down. Let's do it again. Yeah, you do get a little pop when you turn it on. Now, some people think or are annoyed by those turn on clicks. Those things don't bother me. Yeah, I'm more concerned with the quality of the circuit when it's in operation. I don't really care about clicks and things like that. And in my amplifier, I included a port if you want to add an external protection circuit that might have uh, power on delay and um, immediate power turnoff. A lot of commercial amplifiers and receivers will have a relay in their output, and that's connected to a circuit which does all that. But as a DIYer, I don't really want relays in my output because it's just extra complexity. After repairing a lot of receivers over the years, that is a large failure point. Those contacts getting dirty. Sometimes you can clean the relay. Sometimes you have to replace it. But not having it there is much better to me. So there you have it. That is... Power up and down transients, what you can do about it and what maybe you can't do about it. Thanks for watching.